Hello, friends, family, and uh, visitors, <laughs> and, yeah. and people who, oh, so quickly, you're already barking. Come on up. Come on up. She knows. Yeah. Say hello. <laughs> say hello to the world. Say hello. Uh, we were, uh, just just before the show, we were trying to get a little hair out of her eyes, so she got a little... You missed the haircut. Of, uh, haircut <laughs> sideways. But, I'm sorry, uh, Santa. But she's getting longer. She's getting ready, for, getting ready for the end of summer already. She looks like a little sheep. Yeah. She's doing all right. So, but she was. She's been wound up. We've been ready for the show too early today. We're never, never ready uh, this it's early. Never too early. <laughs> and it turns out that the uh, 18th is that what the date is? Uh-huh. Is um, Bad Poetry uh, Day, and so we're going to celebrate Bad Poetry. I day. think it's a great day to celebrate. And uh, and so that'll be here. So have that. Ooh, that'll be a good one, huh? What is that? Take it away. <laughs> um, so. Uh, to celebrate Bad Poetry Day, we're going to make a little bad poetry. We're going to learn a little bit about uh, poetry, yeah. and uh, so it should be a fun show. So if you're uh, if you're just visiting us for the first time, do that like and subscribe kind of stuff, mm-hmm. uh, all that kind of thing. If you are a longtime uh, listener and participant, you know that we appreciate you. Uh, the show is really an interactive show. You'll see. Uh, down on the uh, down right here below me um, when people make comments they pop up there and so uh, if you want to make comments you can come on to our Facebook page or our YouTube page and make your comments there and then they, then we can pop them up on the screen so you participate in the show at the end we do shout outs one of the things I was thinking about Ida uh, I'm getting a little ahead of myself on the show I guess but uh, when we do the shout outs at the end of the show mm-hmm. we ought to all just do shout outs like why do you have to be the only one doing shout outs like I people could type their great own shout idea. outs let's do that so you could do some shout outs people could so if you so think so try to think of a shout out that you might do toward the end of the show today and when we get to the shout out time do a little shout out in the text messages sounds good so i think it could be just a fun thing but uh but we are we are going to get to um uh the fun which is bad poetry bad poetry day (laughs) and And we're going to collaborate it turns out we're going to learn about the poem trees by joyce kilmer (laughs) and as we do we're going to write our own poem and uh based on this american classic poem now you might not know uh, you not, might not uh, have, have spurred off in your mind Trees by Joyce Kilmer. The first thing is Joyce Kilmer is Alfred Joyce Kilmer. It's a man's it's name. It's a man. Uh-huh. And, uh, but uh, Joyce Kilmer, Trees, uh, uh, do you remember the first line of it? Yes. Yeah, what's the first line? I think that I shall never see a poem as lovely as a tree. Yep, that's and that was a, for years that was memorized in schools. And so uh, I know I had so to anyway, memorize so that, it. So that's we're going to use that poem. Lots of people actually think that's not a great poem. Really? But, I um, think it's a beautiful poem. But it was poem. universally accepted and it hit at the right time. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Hi John and Mary. Hi John and Mary Lou. It's great to see you all. So uh anyway, if you're not watching live, you can write down your own poem based on our sophisticated creative poetry process patent pending oh no it always scares me when you you get a little exuberant about how we did this yeah so um it's gonna be good so it's gonna there's gonna be a process we're gonna make our own poem by the end of the show ida's gonna read it it's a 14-step process uh even more than alcoholics anonymous (laughs) um, and uh so uh So uh, Ida's going to go through the 14-step process with us. and uh, the, We definitely need your help for this one, so yeah. please participate. So uh, so let me try to get us started because we have a okay. lot of work to do. All so right. um, so, gotta... so here's, here's how it's going to work. So the first thing you need to do is you need to pick one of these verbs. So we're going to just have one of you out there pick one of these verbs. So whoever's sort of up first or when we catch one. Uh, so here I'll put it up a little bigger on the screen so you can see okay. it. All right, so uh, so pick one of those I, one of those verbs. We're going to call that verb one. If you're if you're uh, keeping track at home, you could write down verb one. But we'll keep track of it here. So the poem that so, we make uh, will will be uh, uh, we'll we'll take care of getting that. So somebody pick one of these uh, one of these words one through twenty. Anybody? Um, I'm, I'm, anybody pick I'm it? ready to take down the first one. Uh, Al and Nancy, while you're out there, why don't you pop in a? Why don't you pop in the verb that we're going to use in our poem? Okay, Al. Al says throw. Throw, which is number fifteen. Okay. okay. So number fifteen will be our verb, verb one. Now, if you want to make your own poem, you could pick your own word and keep track of this. Write it while you're going. Okay. If you're not watching live, I recommend you do that. So mm-hmm. write down verb one and fifteen and throw. Okay. Okay. So that's the that's the first step. Now. 
Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, now, that, now, the person, since Al did that one, we're going to ask you, Al, just sit out for a couple of steps. Right. So we need, now we need new, aunt, new responser, responders to the next question. Yeah. So, so here's the next one. It's funny. Sayla put her nose on the pad and uh, switched, the, <laughs> switched the screen. Okay. She's more interactive than so we know. So what we need is somebody to choose a kind of art, singular. This is a little bit difficult. For instance, like a poem <laughs> or a painting. So a piece of art. So you know, Tapestry, pottery. Sculpture. Yeah. Uh, Just I, shout it all out. All sorts of things. It could, could or be, type it out. could be <laughs> rock and roll. could be music. could be... Um, I don't know. So try to keep it. Try to keep it art, artistic. Something in the art world. All right. So a singular thing. Okay, so we're waiting. So we don't like. We don't want like um, oil paints, but oil painting. Yeah. A single, like a single thing. I'm waiting. I'm gonna. So we'll start wait for that. Mm -hmm. Remember, there are 14 steps. So we want to. We want to try to keep keep this moving. Um. And uh, we're going to write a poem because of August 18th being the Bad Poetry Day. We're going to do our Bad Poetry Day sort of releases you a little bit. It gives you the opportunity to dabble in poetry, even if it's bad poetry. Because it, even if it's bad, it's a win. See, the, the worse you make the poem, the better, the better you've, you've hit the goal. Um, and so there's contests all over the internet. There's some colleges that have bad poetry um, days and, and meetings. So. We got Kristen said music. Okay. We have several responses, but but Kristen was a first, so music. Um, so is music specific enough? Mm -hmm. uh, well, we have three answers. We have music, we have sunset, and we have pottery. Okay. So wow, neat. So music. Let me just let me just make sure that music will fit. Okay. Our, uh, but we're looking for a singular here. Um, yeah, that's good. Music Music's is fun. good. Okay. okay. So, All right, on so to Kristen, the... if you just sit out for a round or two, come back in in a couple of rounds. Now, this one, nobody has to do anything on this round because what we're going to do is we're going to take the number oh, from okay. the verb that we had in the first round and we're going to pick the corresponding uh, noun okay. on this page. We're going to call that one noun one. Oh. So the last page was art. First one was verb one. Second one was art. Now we're doing noun one. So in this case... Our number 15 is a crow, oh. a crow uh, that was picked as part of the, um, so the, the poem uh, Trees was, um, uh, was written by, as I said, Joyce Kilmer, who was born in New Brunswick, New, Brunswick, New Jersey, and uh, that was in 1886, so more than 100 years ago this poem was written, and, um, and Trees was first published in 1913. And uh, so, wow, so I really, realize, really, that's the, that's older than I thought it was. Yeah, in Poetry Magazine. So that's <laughs> sort of interesting. And and Kilmer was paid six dollars for the poem in 1913. And, that was you know that was quite a bit. And he was a young guy; he hadn't written a lot of poems. He was pretty prolific. He wrote a lot of poems. He didn't live real long, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But uh, he uh, he wrote to the editor and said if she if she didn't like the line about the robins in her hair, that she could change that. <laughs> So that was so that sort of gives you an insight oh. into how like he wasn't like a stuck up poet at that point, you know, that he, everything that he knew everything that was yeah. from what I've learned about him, he wasn't a stuck up poet ever. Ever, but, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice guy. Nice yeah. guy. That's that's one of the reasons why we're honoring him and talking about him today. All right, so let's get on to the next one. Uh, oh, I, let me just bring that one up on a big screen for those of you who are picking your number. So whatever that, on step one, whatever the number was that you picked, you have to pick the corresponding one because we're because these words have to rhyme. So that's what, so you're picking okay. uh, the rhyme word uh, off of this page. Okay, so now on the next one. Okay, uh, what's the next we're one? Going step to, four? We're going, yeah, step four. We're now going to choose an adjective. And adjectives are always so hard to uh, to pull out. But, y you know, an, a, a, for example, enormous or silly or yellow or fun or fast. It describes a noun. An adjective describes a noun. Yeah, so a descriptive adjective. word. We're looking for an adjective now. So if somebody could pop in an adjective. And while you're working on that, I'm going to read the poem, The Trees. Oh, Good. So this is our little poet poet moment, all right? So if you want at home, you can click your fingers <laughs> and you can say, yeah, daddy-o. Oh, no, yeah, daddy. Like, as that I read. dated you really bad, Calvin. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. So here we go. daddy -o. <laughs> Trees. Trees. I think that I shall never see a poem lovely as a tree, a tree whose hungry mouth is pressed 
against the earth's sweet flowing breast, a tree that looks at God all day and lifts her leafy arms to pray, a tree that may in summer wear a nest of robins in her hair, <laughs> upon whose bosom snow has lain, who intimately lives with rain. Poems are made by fools like me, but only God can make a tree. I love that. So that's, you know, it's a nice memorable, like that's why I think a lot of people memorize it. It's just got those, um, how many lines is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve lines. Uh, so not too hard to memorize. You know, um, uh, Kilmer liked to, uh, liked to uh, recite his own poems. And so I hope I did it justice. I think you did. Um, he's not around <laughs> to do it anymore. But We have several adjectives. Kathy uh -huh. came up with happy. Mm -hmm. Rob Silly. John Beautiful. But happy. Okay, so we're going to go with Kathy and happy because since that was, was, the, the first. was the first one. And uh, so that's great. You could pick any adjective. If you're, uh, if you're playing along, you'd call this one adjective one. So you'd write that on the piece of paper. At the end, you'll be able to fill in all the blanks with these things. Sort of like a Mad Lib. Yes. Uh, poem is what we're doing. So, um, so step five to our poem, the chosen noun must be related to or part of noun one. Mm -hmm. So you have to go back and look up noun one. What Which was our noun crow. one? Crow. crow. Yeah. So now you have to pick, as noun two, you have to pick something that is either related to or part of. A crow. Part of a crow. Okay. So pick something that's part of a crow. All right. So if somebody would throw that out there for us. Um, so the, the poem was immediately a hit with the general public when it came out uh -huh. uh, all, in those early years. And uh, if not, critics, uh, you know, the critics and the academics, they didn't like it so much. But the general population really did. And I think it was because it, it uh, was just easily memorized by and, you know, performed. And so it was something that could be done as a as a part of a pageant. Uh -huh. um, and, uh, you know, I remember when I was a kid, we'd have like shows and we'd. Oh, We'd make we did the whole family too. come and sit on chairs. We had this big, it used to be an old swing set, and the swings long had broken off, and we used to throw sheets over it, and we would do neighborhood <laughs> musicals and all kinds of different shows. It was lots of fun. Now, th now this was, think about this, this was in the one-room one schoolhouse days, and so oh, they'd yeah. have a recitation bench in these schoolhouses where they where people would sit mm -hmm. and they do their reciting from the bench and so this was nice. something that would be there so <laughs> trees was you know could be easily mastered because of its short uh and its relatableness mm -hmm. um by people who were like afraid to memorize and uh, or even forgetful so it so it was a it was a unifying poem for everyone all right so noun we have, one we have noun two noun one Oh, noun one is. Oh, you're crow. right. Noun two. You're right. Noun two. <laughs> noun two is feather. Noun two is feather. Good one. That's a, that is indeed related to a crow. So, uh, so you got it. If you're playing along at home, you can pick your own. The next one is going to be verb two. Okay. Okay. The verb chosen two. verb must be an action in the past tense that you can take with noun one. Now, <laughs> so wait think a of a verb. <laughs> so think of a verb. A verb. Uh, that that that's an action that you can take. So something that you can do with a feather. What would an action be that you or a crow would do with a feather, right? Okay. And uh, and so uh, you're going to pick that action word, but you're going to make it past tense. Okay. So we need somebody to pop out. And the people who've been sitting out, you can you can sit back in if you'd like. Uh, all right. So something. We do action with a feather. An action with a feather. That's okay. what we're looking for now. Uh -huh. An action with a feather. And it's actually past tense. You, okay. you can put whatever. You can give us any action and we'll make it past tense. <laughs> yeah. Um, but if you're playing at home, we're looking for the past tense of it. Uh, this is going to be probably a critically acclaimed collaboration. Oh, so, my goodness. You know, yeah. whatever words there, you there, We really I, are not able to give... Um, to share the money on this one. That's right, because it'll probably well, <laughs> come pouring in. If it turns out to be like <laughs> like trees, which is public domain, doesn't make any money at all. Uh, we, we, I'm sorry, we can't share that with you. <laughs> we have tickled. Please get down. Please get down. Tickled is the word. Okay. Um. Let's see. It seems like did I am I on am I on task? You are. Okay. So on verb two. So here we go. So the next one is um, noun three. Uh, noun three. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is we're going to look up uh, a noun that rhymes with verb two. 
Okay, so you won't be able to see this, but I am, what was verb two? Tickled. Tickled. Oh, that's going to be a tough one, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so I have, there's a website called rhymedb.com. R-H-Y-M-E-D-B.com. It's rhyme database, rhymedb.com. Okay. <laughs> All right, and I'm going to put the word tickle, and we're looking for a one-syllable word that rhymes with tickle. So I'm going to give you some choices now. Brickle, chickle, fickle, mickle, nickel, pickle, prickle, sickle, stickle, and trickle. All right. <laughs> Those are words that rhyme with tickle. And what we're looking for is a noun. So it needs to be a noun. Okay. So trickle, stickle, sickle, prickle, pickle, nickel, um, fickle. Do I get to pick it? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're looking for somebody, somebody out there. Um, so, so on the poem, several yeah. critics actually. I can put you, put you back up. Oh there. yeah, let me do that. Including a number of uh, a, a number of his contemporaries, uh, really disparaged his work as being simple and overly sentimental and suggested his style was too traditional and even archaic. Hmm. Um, and now, today, we've definitely gotten to that point. But it's interesting, even when it came out, some people were feeling like it wasn't progressive enough, like it wasn't cutting edge enough. It, it was just regular meter, regular rhyme, just vivid imagery, and that wasn't enough for folks. So um, uh, the, today I was talking to uh, Al about having to do Bad Poet Day today, and he said, you know, you're not going to do Ogden Nash poems, are you? So that reminded me, okay, I will do an Ogden Nash. It turns out Ogden Nash has a parody of Kilmer's work and style. Oh, yeah? So I'm going to read you his poem now, all right? Okay. I think that I shall never see a billboard lovely as a tree. Indeed, unless the billboards fall, I'll never see a tree at all. Oh, I get it. <laughs> he didn't think much of. It. He didn't think much of the. Uh, so we're looking for the rhyme word to tickle. Um, we have pickle. Pickle was the first one. Yes. That's your choice, pickle. Thank you for that. I saw a nickel up there too, but we're going to go with pickle. Uh, and now the next one. So it'll be pickled, or will it be pickle? Um, no pickle. It's a noun. Okay. A pickle. A pickle. Just pickle. Okay. Pickle. Right. Please stop. Please stop. Okay. Now we're going to look for another adjective. This one would be called adjective two. All right. And uh, so we're just looking for an adjective, something that describes a noun. Uh, describes some. Don't don't associate it with pickle because it might be a completely different noun. Right. So you don't want right. to think of something that. You know, to try to try to clear your mind. Come up with a new adjective like enormous. Um. <laughs> Silly, yellow, fun, <laughs> fast, beautiful, you're attitude. happy. All right. <laughs> okay. um, you know, the, the, one of the reasons why trees was so well accepted was because of the timing of it. See, we'd really, at that point, really conquered the West and settled. Mm -hmm. And everybody was now starting to settle into cities. And, uh, and more and more, we were, uh, we were uh, urban dwellers. Mm -hmm. And so the trees were being left behind. There were factories mm -hmm. and things like that that were happening. And so during that, during that period of America, people wanted to, please stop, please stop, no. Uh, remember the trees. And so that's one of the reasons why it caught on so well was come on, come on. Come on. So, uh, so that people could, uh, you know, could just remember about Arbor Day yeah. and uh, the importance of the trees and the beauty of the, uh, of the environment. You really start to appreciate things once they're gone. Like yeah. if, you, if you don't see trees all the time, you really do appreciate them. So the Western Frontier had been declared, mm -hmm. right? And, uh, and, uh, and the Americans were settled and they were cherishing nature. They were yeah. trying to think about um, Mother Nature. And over the years, the poem became uh, sort of a, a, a cross-generational glue, right? That one generation would learn it, and then mm -hmm. the next generation, and so parents could, could say it to their kids and uh, hear the children practice it and uh, chime in because <laughs> they would knew it, know it too. So it was a fun sort of family thing. So we have green and stupendous. John answered before, so maybe we should take the next one, which is stupendous. I think so too. I don't think okay. we want it to be associated with pickle necessarily. 
stupendous, that's a good one. So uh, if you're playing at home, you could pick any adjective and you're going to label that one adjective too. Okay, moving on. Uh, now, we're now we're looking for noun number four. Um, and this is a plural body part. Makes it very simple. A plural body part. Yep, you're just looking so for a body part, a body part of which we have more of than which one. We have more than one, right? Plural. <laughs> okay. Uh, plural body part. Um, <laughs> but now the poem's falling out of vogue. Students don't do uh, poetry memorization anymore. That's so sad. And uh, well, I don't know. Is it? I think it is. Um, it's I'm, it's you know change. In it. Well, it's change in the in the educational culture, right? Right. So um, <laughs> I don't have to like it. <laughs> people aren't. People aren't emphasizing comprehension and invention so much. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, comp they are emphasizing comprehension, understanding, and invention. Um, the the rote memorization we have the internet for that, and so uh, we we don't remember as much. We have the internet for lots of things, but I find that I don't I don't memorize things nearly like I used to or like you would. I, I just actually got a on. phone call this morning with someone who was trying to get in touch with you and he needed your phone number. And I thought, I should know that. But you you entered the phone numbers into your cell phone. And <laughs> did nobody, you have to look it up? I did. I don't even know my own phone number. So, <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, let's see. We have... So And also, rhyme is not really a big deal. And being sentimental is not... You know, people are not really, you know, overly sentimental. So... We're looking for a plural body part right. now. I've got, okay, I have, how about eyes? Eyes, okay, eyes, and we're going to call that noun number four. Okay. If uh, if you're doing this from the recording, you write it down, we'll get it if, if not. Okay, only, uh, only a few more steps. Another uh, Here we go. Next, we want adjective three, but this is something that describes noun four. So something that describes eyes. Something that describes eyes. Okay. So we want an adjective that describes eyes. But if you picked a different adjective in, in what you're doing, something that describes noun four okay. on your page. Okay? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm confusing people probably. Yeah, and we're going to call that adjective three. Adjective three. All right. So I mentioned that Kilmer really liked to do his own poetry. He was an actor. Uh and uh, really enjoyed, you know, doing that kind of thing. And he became a uh, really a famous lecturer. He would uh, go on the lecture circuit, and he was he was one of like the big lecturers of his day. Um, and uh, you know, uh, from from an American standpoint, a lot of the poets were British, mm -hmm. and so he was like the American uh, circuit guy. And uh, he was really prolific. He wrote a lot of poems. Um, and his poetry celebrated, in general, like the trees, the beauty of the natural world and also his Roman Catholic uh, religious faith. Um, Kilmer uh, really was the leading American Roman Catholic poet and lecturer uh, of his generation. Hmm. So, uh, so he was a man of faith. He had a strong, that was an important part of life to him. So what do we got for noun four? Sultry. 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 Whoa. Mm. Sultry eyes, I think, <laughs> is what we've come up with. Okay. All right. So, so that's a good one. So now we're going to move on. Now we're going to choose a place. Name a city or town that's important to someone participating. So name a city or town that's important to you. Uh, and uh, uh, and we'll, we'll put that one in. Name a city or town. So Kilmer was originally an atheist. Really? Yeah. And... Uh, Actually, he faced... Because he mentions God in his poem. Well, not when he wrote the poem. Oh, okay. Uh, before, before he wrote the poem, he was an atheist. And um, what really turned it for him was a tragedy in his life. He had a daughter uh, who contracted polio and died from polio um, while he was quite young. And so that actually led him to, uh, to faith in the Catholic Church that that was his that was his way of finding consolation he couldn't he couldn't figure out a way to deal with uh, what was going on in his world without faith and uh, and moved into that uh, so um, so trees you know is a uh, is a theistic work um, and uh, it's uh, it, it really came out of this losing battle for polio so it has a little bit of a sad edge to it so, huh. 
Well, we have Pittsburgh as a place. Pittsburgh, is that the one you want to go with? That's so that's, predictable. Since that's the we're... only one we have so far. Yep, well, we've got to go with what we go with. So we'll take well, Pittsburgh. we have San Jose. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. I can't pronounce that, John. <laughs> What's wrong with San Jose? San Jose del Negro. Oh, he's talking about a different <laughs> about place the, in the world. Yeah, yeah, where they... yeah. yeah so... Uh, uh, so we're going to, I guess we'll stick with Pittsburgh. Okay. Um, and I want, I want to read you this quote of, uh, of what he said okay. uh, when, when asked about his poetry. He said, if what I now write is considered poetry, he said, then I became a poet in November 1913. And that was when he became a Catholic. Wow. So he, so he didn't consider his himself a poet until he uh, understood his place in, uh, in the world and, and God's place in the world. So I just thought that was a, a, fun, a fun quote to know about him. Okay, let's keep moving. Okay. Uh, the next one is something alive. What we would like is something alive that is plural. So a living thing that, is, that, you, can, uh, that you can make plural. So okay. we're gonna, this is something alive that you can make plural. So the faith that had rescued him from his despair due to the loss of his daughter also led Kilmer to enlist in the army just a few weeks after the United States entered World War I. Mm. Um, he was, uh, it was his faith that really pressed him for. And I want to read you a little piece from a letter to his wife that he wrote when he was in war, when he was in World War I, a pretty terrible uh, time. He described the benefits of his faith. So, he, so this gives you some insight into his faith. I think since I've been in France, it has done it, meaning faith, has done more for me. It has carried me through experiences I could not have otherwise endured. I do not mean it has kept me from fear, for I have no fear of death or wounding whatever. I mean that it has helped me endure great and continual hardships. I cannot forget what made me live through them and bear myself like a man. So his faith, you know, mm -hmm. he felt it had to do with being a man. So that's interesting. Uh, anybody come up with one? We have a couple deer and some chickens. Okay. <laughs> I think chickens because that's, as a rotation of responses go, I think chickens. Okay. Is... Rob, we're gonna have you uh, sit back for that one answer and maybe we'll get you the next time. All right, so, so now we're just two more steps left. We're almost done. Uh, noun number five, name a singular body part this time, a different one, but a singular body part. So not something that you have two of, but something you have one of. So he enlisted in the New York National Guard and was deployed to France, as you heard in his letter, mm -hmm. in the 69th Infantry, which is the famous fighting 69th. It, there's, uh, there's lots of pride in the famous 69th. In 1917, this happened. Mm -hmm. So he was only 30, 31 years old. Um, and the sad news is that he was killed at that point. He was killed by a sniper's bullet at the Second Battle of Marne in 1918 at the age of 31. So uh, he had a very short life. He only made it to 31. That's to think of um, everything he accomplished in 31 yeah, short years. Yeah, published some books. and uh, Had very, a family, yeah. had experienced loss of a child. I mean, that's a lot to happen in 31 years. Yep. Um, Hmm. Interesting guy, and yet everybody recites his poet, his poetry, and uh, or at least did. Do we have a singular body part? We have nose. Okay, nose it is. John Zolko got that in by a nose. <laughs> Kristen said mouth, but John got <laughs> nose in first. Okay, now I'm going to bring this up on the screen because this all goes all the way back to verb one. Oh so you, again, you don't do anything on this one. We're, it's just going to be picked for you. Okay. You go back and you look up what number verb one was, this. and you pick the word, the associated uh, phrase off this list. This one is called phrase. So pick the phrase with the same number as verb one. What was the verb one for us? Uh, verb one. Fifteen. Number fifteen. So we're going to pick number fifteen, and it's the words we um, choose. Or is that chose? Uh, I think it's chose. Chose, yep. The words we chose. All right. But if you're uh, if you're playing along and have a different poem than us, you need to go back to your verb one 
and pick the corresponding number from this. Uh, and it's a, that's a matter of rhyming again, okay? Okay, Ruth said heart. We got lots of hearts out there. Aw. <laughs> oh, that's a little too late. We're going to go first. with those. Yep. So um, one last uh, piece of information about uh, Joyce Kilmer. He was married to Aline Murray, who is also an accomplished poet and author, and they had five children. Five children. So they weren't. he wasn't just prolific with poetry. No. <laughs> <laughs> he was prolific in reproduction. That's really... <laughs> Well, that's right, good. So, he left a legacy behind So do him. I need to stall a bit so that you can put the no, poem together, or are you ready for it? I've All right, well, wait a second. I want to get a close-up shot of you for the, po for the oh, poem, no. okay? So, so you, you read the poem as we have it. So now, oh, I, actually, I can't do that. I have to show everybody the screen. Okay. Well, we'll do that after. I'm going to do a close-up of you, Ida, reading our poem. And then, and then I'll put up, for those who are, have made their own poem, I'll put up the, uh, the outline so you can... Okay, uh, this is what we it. came up with. As a team, we collaborated, and I feel like this is going to be something that will make its mark on history. Yeah. And we, sh we should all be very proud of it. <laughs> okay. The title of... In terms of bad poetry. We're yeah, gonna well... Be... <laughs> Here we go. The title of the poem is Crow. Crows. Crows. It's plural. Crows. I think that I shall never throw a music lovely as a crow. A crow whose happy feather is tickled against earth's sweet stupendous pickle. A crow that looks at God all day and lifts her sultry eyes to pray. A crow that may in Pittsburgh wear a nest of chickens in her hair, upon whose nose snow has lain, who intimately lives with rain. Parodies are made by the words we chose but only God can make a crow. Oh, I laughed. <laughs> I cried. I was moved. I was <laughs> so funny. <laughs> wow. Well, okay. <laughs> wow. I don't even know what to say I, about that. Say, well, I don't know either. <laughs> So while it's we talk, sort of like your jokes, <laughs> <laughs> that poem might rank right up there with. While both. we talk, I'm going to put that. So if you would want to play the game again, you could go back and watch the video and make yeah. your own poem. Yeah. Uh, you could choose a different verb at the beginning, different words along the way. Maybe you didn't like the words we chose, and you want to do it. You can just once the once the it's posted, you can go Throw back it out, and look do at it all over again. But now at this point, you're going to have to uh, look at the this template to fill in the blanks. So do a screenshot here or uh, so that you can have this. So here I'm going to make it big. So here's the first half of the poem. And you can see underneath are written the words, you know, the plural of noun one. I think that I shall never. Verb one goes in there. Uh, kind of art goes in the next one. <laughs> Lovely as noun one. So you just fill in the blanks uh, with the words that we uh, went through. And then the next uh, page. So take a snap. So take a picture of that if you're uh, playing along would like to make your own poem and then here's the second part oh okay so now you want to take a picture of this and you'll have the whole poem put together and we would love it if you want to post your poem oh that'd be a cool that would be cool <laughs> if, if you're watching on youtube or yeah. facebook yeah it's a lot of work i realize but uh but it could be some fun i did and i did it a couple of times before yes. the show so uh, and i thought you know the crows crows was better it was the best. Like you liked the was, crows. Yeah, I, I liked it better than. So, so that's the best one we did so well. That's because there are lots of uh, lots of people <laughs> working the, on it. The camera. Yeah, well, I just wanted to make sure everybody got a shot of it. Okay. Okay. So we're back here. Hello. So um, uh, yeah. So uh, so that but that's you know our what? sophisticated creative poetry process, patent pending. But right. But in a way, it was like a, it. It was a sneaky way, really. To make me appreciate history, because I really do not like studying history, but so now I know. I got, you snuck a history lesson in there. So now I know about this We snuck some facts in about That's right. Alfred Joyce Gilmer. Kilmer. That's it. All That's right. right. So okay. we're going to move on with the show. Thanks for playing along. Uh, you can always wind back and uh, and repeat parts. We hope that you will use our tool, our patent pending tool. Patent pending. And uh, uh, it's the only thing like it on the internet. You won't find that 
I don't, else. That's, I don't think so. That is our, that's our, our little thing. Really, a lot of work went into that. Kelvin, thank you for that. So Kathy said her network went down. She had to go to her phone, so she might have to go back just to, mm -hmm. uh, to figure mm -hmm. it out and replay it. Okay, well, let's keep going through yeah. the big show. Um, it's time, Ida, for your uh, saying of the week. Do you have that? Goodness. You have that somewhere nearby? <laughs> Let me see. I've got it. It's underneath there. I, I see it. I see it. Okay. All right. Uh, well, this one was particularly <laughs> impressive, I think, because not <laughs> I, was, I always try to match up my saying with what's going on with our shout outs and the, the, the special days of the month and the, the special. Uh, things that are going on and this happens to match up with it being friendship week isn't that fun and it's world mosquito day <laughs> so <laughs> okay whatever um, so both friendship and mosquitoes are involved that's right oh this is this who is knew complex. that i could this is getting it is complex but i'm proud of it if Oops. you think <laughs> i wanted to bring up the real one okay here we go if you think you are too small to make a difference try sleeping with a mosquito the dalai lama so i think that what that says is <laughs> you know how a mosquito doesn't give up we don't we don't give up either and so we you don't have to be a great special person to just make a difference you just have to be kind and be generous and um and be a friend so. It's the truth. We had a fly in the studio. I don't know if it's still here or if, if Sailor got to it, but uh, I I noticed that little fly flying around. We were like, I hope that fly gets out of here by the time the show <laughs> Leave starts. Me alone, fly. So that's true. They're just just little little pestery things can make a big difference. That's right. What you doing, Sayla? Huh? She's gonna come up here. And just, yes, you're a good girl. <laughs> All right. So uh, we should do the joke of the day though, too, right? Um, do we have to? And do we have to, Ida? <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. This one's going to be a good one. I just okay, the feel it. I feel it Joke of the day this on. week is Bootsy Amor. Well, boot, well, and first of all, anybody with a name like Bootsy exactly. what a great has name. to be a great joke teller. Not everybody so. is named Boots. That's not a nickname. That's her name, Boots. Her name is Boots. Yep. She has Indian roots, and she's named Boots. And her middle name is Bootsy. Her middle name is C. Uh, but are you telling me the truth? Amor or Amor uh -huh. uh, is is her uh, uh, her married name, so I that see. wasn't her. Well, that's uh, her really birth name. cool. Boots C. Yeah. yeah. Bootsy. Yeah. Oh, Amor. I like it. <laughs> Bootsy Amor. She's and she fits the name too. She's uh, wonderful, and uh, you can see she has she's those Indian cheekbones, mm -hmm. and she's uh, and she's Amor. She's a very loving person. So anyway, here's Bootsy uh, often uh, checks in with us uh, on the show or during the week. So Bootsy, hello. It's nice to Hi, see Bootsy, you. Bootsy, nice to meet you. Uh, we notice you, and uh, um, so here's uh, we 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 put words into Bootsy's mouth, or maybe this is her joke. I'm not sure which, but something. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, so Bootsy says, what did the poet say to Luke Skywalker? What did, staying on the poetry theme, see? Yeah, the poet. Bootsy's very relevant. <laughs> what did the poet say to Luke Skywalker? Got a guess? I don't have a clue what the poet said to Luke Skywalker. Uh, metaphors my. be with you. <laughs> metaphors be with metaphors you. Metaphors be with you. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great one Bootsy Good you've job. done it again and look it seems like she's uh, she has a, a photo on Tatooine come on up uh, that's right. come on up come on <laughs> metaphors be with you I I know hey I'll tell you what there's some great poetry dad jokes out there if you want to look them up okay you can, you can, there's all sorts of good ones <laughs> ones we can repeat so, on the air yeah. if we wanted to okay, so that then. was the best of them that was the best of them and you say there are great ones out there <laughs> oh my uh, listen if uh, uh, the shows uh, the after show is going to continue on Facebook however this YouTube live broadcast is about to end so for you YouTube folks thank you for coming by thanks for we being love here. you uh, you're uniquely the same I'm uniquely the same together we can change the world you can watch more videos over there and they're listed down below see you next time